Hey, I'm Jay from the Cub Scouts. Welcome back to another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club. And I'm not going to lie to you guys. After I ended the first recording of the first episode, I kind of just sat there staring at the footage and I said to myself, What the fuck is this shit? But you guys showed me so much support on the first episode. You guys left a lot of likes on it, a lot of comments. You guys told me to play the next episode with the game files open. And I just play games. I don't know all the like behind the scenes technical mumbo jumbo. So I looked it up how to open the game files for like a game on Steam. And I have it on my other monitor right here, so I'll be looking at it from time to time because a lot of you guys told me to play it with the game files open. And I'm going to stick with this game because a lot of you guys told me that this game is so damn good, and I'll take your word for it. So if you guys are cool with that and you're down with that, everybody sit down, buckle the fuck up, because here we go. Okay, so now we're back at this poem making bullshit. And I have to choose 20 words. And the words that I choose depend on the girl that I want to kind of get to know a little bit better. Sayori, Natsuki, and Yuri are the three girls that I can impress. I kind of want to go for Natsuki. I don't know why. So I'm going to choose happiness. And then let's choose fun. We're going to go with puppy again because we like puppies. Clouds, friends, uh, pleasure. I mean, we can always go for some pleasure. You know what I'm saying? And then we'll go with kitty. Because why the fuck not? Parfait! We'll go with vanilla. And then we'll go with lollipop. And the last one is going to be... Da -da -da -da. We're gonna go with parts. Okay. Let's see if I made an awesome poem today. Another day passes, and it's time for the club meeting already. I've gotten a little more comfortable here over the past couple days. Well, good for you. Entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. Hi, Jay. Yo, Siori. Looks like you're in a good mood today. <laughs> I'm just still not used to you being in the club, that's all. I see. That's a pretty simple thing to get you in a good mood. But I guess it's always the simple thing is with you anyway. Speaking of which, I'm kinda hungry. Will you come with me to buy a snack? No thanks. Damn! Anime J is a savage. Eh? That's not like you at all. I have my reasons. Why don't we take a look at your purse, Sayori? Eh? Why that all of a sudden? No reason, really. I just want to look at it. Ah. Sayori nervously retrieves her coin purse. She fumbles with the latch and gets it open. Then, she turns it upside down and lets its contents spill onto the desk. Only two small coins fall out. <laughs> I knew it! Oh, she's a little gold digger! I can see right through you, Sayori. That's not fair! How did you even know? Man, I can smell a broke ass from a mile away. It's simple. If you had enough money in the first place, you would have bought a snack before coming to the club room. Ah, Anime J is a good thinker. So, either you're not hungry and wanted an excuse to take a walk, or you plan to conveniently forget that you spent all your money so that I would lend you some. But there's one more thing. You're always hungry. And so, that only leaves the one option. Uh -huh? I give up! Don't make me feel guilty! If you feel guilty, that means you deserve to feel guilty. <laughs> Yuri suddenly giggles. Where the fuck did she come from? I didn't notice that she was listening in. Her face is in her book, as always. Uh huh? I wasn't listening or anything. It was just... Something in my book, sure. Yuri! Tell Jay to let me borrow some money. That's... Don't get me involved like that, Sayori. Besides, you should only buy what you can responsibly afford. And frankly, after pulling a mischievous little stunt like that, your suffering is fair enough retribution. Ah! Uh, did I just... I didn't mean that. I got too absorbed in my book. Ugh! <laughs> I really like when you speak your mind, Yuri. It doesn't happen much, but it's a fun side of you. That's... There's no way you could think that. You were right, though. I did something bad, and now I have to accept the revolution. Retribution. That! Still, coming from you, Sayori? I guess there's a little devil inside all of us, isn't there? <laughs> Don't let her fool you. Sayori knows exactly what she's doing. After all, she told you guys she was bringing me to the club before she even told me. But! You wouldn't have come if it weren't for the cupcakes. So I had to trick Natsuki into making them. Come on, give me more credit than that, Sayori. 
Flap! Damn, somebody got bitch slapped? Kya! Out of nowhere, something smacks Sayori in the face and tumbles onto the desk. Ow! What was... Eh? A cookie! Sure enough, it's a giant cookie wrapped in plastic. Sayori glances around. Is this a miracle? It's because I paid my restitution! Retribution! Actually, that one almost worked. <laughs> I was just gonna give it to you. But then I heard you blab about the cupcakes. It was totally worth seeing your reaction, though. <laughs> Natsuki! That's so nice of you. I'm so happy. Siori hugs the cookie. Jeez, just eat it. Siori rapidly tears open the wrapper and takes a big bite. Show good! <laughs> Siori suddenly clasps her hands over her mouth. I bit my tongue! <laughs> You're going through a lot over just one cookie. Natsuki takes a bite of her own cookie. Ah, yours is really good too, Natsuki! Can I try it? Jeez! Beggars can't be choosers! But yours is chocolate! Yeah, why do you think I gave you that one? Fine! Still, I'm really happy that you shared this one with me. Hehehe. <laughs> Siori gets out of her seat and goes behind Natsuki, then wraps her arms around her. Why do they keep doing that? Ah, jeez! I get it, I get it. Cookie still in hand, Natsuki reaches up to nudge Siori off of her. Oh! Siori suddenly leans down and takes a bite out of Natsuki's cookie. Hey! Did you seriously just do that? <laughs> Mouthful, Sayori trots away to safety. Yuri and I laugh as well. I ain't laughing. Jeez, you're such a kid sometimes. Monica, can you tell Sayori... Eh? Natsuki glances around. Monica isn't in the club room. Ugh! Where's Monica anyway? Good question. Have any of you heard anything about her being late today? Not me. Yeah, I haven't either. Hmm, that's a bit unusual. I hope she's okay. Of course she's okay. She probably just had something to do today. She's pretty popular after all. Eh? You don't think she... She has a... <laughs> I wouldn't be surprised. She's probably more desirable than all of us combined. <laughs> that's true. Excuse me? Suddenly, the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. Ah, there you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Eh? Monica chose the club over her boyfriend after all. You're so strong-willed. B-boyfriend? What on earth are you talking about? Monica quizzically glances at me. Uh, never mind that. What held you up anyway? Ah, well, my last period today was study hall. To be honest, I kind of just lost track of time. <laughs> that makes no sense, though. You would have heard the bell ring, at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't aware you played music as well, Monica. Ah, uh, I don't, really. I kind of just started recently. I've always wanted to learn piano. That's so cool! You should play something for us, Monica! That's... Monica looks at me. Maybe once I get a little bit better, I will. Yay! That sounds cool. I'd also look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Jay. Thank you, Monica. Monica smiles sweetly, and she also sticks her ass out at me again. Ah! I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ha <laughs> ha! Don't worry, I've been practicing a whole lot recently, and I'd really love the chance to share once I'm ready. I see. In that case, best of luck. Thanks! So, I didn't miss anything, did I? Not really. I choose to leave out Sayori's mischievous escapade. I'm sure Natsuki will end up complaining to her anyway. It looks like everyone has already settled down. Sayori somehow already finished her entire cookie. Yuri is back to her book, and Natsuki disappeared into the closet.
It's not long before Natsuki comes up to me expectantly. Yeah, yeah. Don't worry, I kept my promise. I pull the first volume of Parfait Girls out from my bag. Natsuki takes it from my hands, then quickly turns it over, presumably to check for wrinkles. Hey, I'm not that careless. I handle manga all the time, you know. I just want to make sure. Can you blame me for being paranoid? I don't give people my manga every day, you know. That's true. I don't blame you. Well, anyway, let me put this one back. I'm gonna get the next one, okay? Natsuki makes her way to the closet. I follow. So you're gonna tell me everything you thought, right? Where did this volume leave off again? I forget. Ah, the chapter ended when Minori and Alice found... Monica! Natsuki's voice resonates out from inside the closet. Huh? I peer inside. All of Natsuki's books are lined up on the top shelf. Did you move my manga again? Uh, sorry, sorry. The teacher got mad at me for taking up so much space in her closet. So I had to move some stuff around and clean up a little bit. It's all still there, I just had to organize it a bit. Ugh. The top shelf is far above Natsuki's head. She makes a futile hop, trying to figure out how to reach her manga. Jeez! This is so inconvenient. I'm moving these all back down. There's plenty of room on these shelves. And besides, they're really pretty to look at when they're all lined up. Why would you waste that on the top shelf? Uh, Natsuki? There's a stool on the wall there. In the closet, there's a collapsible stool that's hanging on the wall. If you want, I can reach up there and hand them to you. I can get them myself. Natsuki grabs the stool from the wall and unfolds it. You think I'm too short or something? I mean, I knew it! Well, you know what? Just watch me. Natsuki hops on the stool, which ends up being a little wobbly because of its collapsible design. Ah! Careful! I know what I'm doing! Standing on the stool, Natsuki's fingertips reach the top shelf. The stool would be enough for me to easily grab the books, but Natsuki is being stubborn as usual. Ugh. Natsuki uses her fingers to scoot one of the smaller boxes to the edge of the shelf. See? Kya! The box suddenly tips. Natsuki barely catches it before it falls to the floor. The stool wobbles. Whoa! Losing balance, Natsuki hops off the stool. Thankfully, she was able to stay on her feet. She holds the box triumphantly. There! Having almost fell, Natsuki is a bit shaken up. Jeez. No need to prove yourself to me. There's no way you'll be able to get the bigger boxes like that. I can reach them, so just... I said I can do it! I don't want your help, okay? <sighs> I'm gonna get a chair, so just hang on. Natsuki forces her way past me out of the closet. Let's see. The classroom chairs have the desks attached, so they're too inconvenient to fit in the closet. Aha! Natsuki trots over to the teacher's desk, which has a computer chair behind it. Are we really making her getting the manga off the shelf this complicated? She rolls it on its wheels back over to the closet. Ah! It's a little dangerous since the chair swivels and rolls. But I've already learned my lesson, so I keep my mouth shut. Ugh! Natsuki climbs onto the chair, then slowly balances onto her feet. Since she refuses my help, I take a seat with my back against the side of the doorway and simply watch. Aha! There we go! See? I can easily do it now. Natsuki grabs a stack of manga and bends down to put it on the shelf below. Whoa! The chair swivels. Natsuki catches herself on the shelf. What are you doing? Can you at least hold the chair steady instead of sitting and doing nothing? Who was it who told me not to help? Yeah, yeah, I gotcha. I hold the chair while Natsuki reaches back up. I can! I can almost see up her skirt. Don't do it, you perv! Don't do it, you sicko! Gah. I forced myself to turn away. Good job, Jay. High five for that one. Natsuki seriously didn't think this through. Once she realizes, I'll be dead. Huh? Natsuki wraps her arms around the parfait girl's box set, easily the largest one on the shelf. Ugh, heavy. Hey, Jay. I don't think I can bend down without falling. 
Hurry and take this one. Uh? But then I have to let go of the chair. That's fine. Just for a second. Hurry up. All right. Let me just stand up. I slowly release my grip from the chair. What do you mean, stand up? Matsuki looks down at me. Why are you all the way back? Uh? Matsuki looks like she just realized something, but she'll lose her balance if she moves. Natsuki, the box! Ooh, what are you looking at? You're trying to look up my... My... Natsuki's legs shake. I'm not! I was just... Natsuki, don't try to move. Just give me the box. You... You perv! You set me up. Go away. Get out! But... I'll do it myself. Ah! The chair suddenly swivels beneath Natsuki's feet. Natsuki! Yeah! The scene turns to chaos in a split second. The chair flies from under Natsuki's feet. Frantically, I try to catch her. The box topples out of her hands and the books go flying. I got you! And he didn't get her. The full force of Natsuki's body against me throws me to the ground. A whole bunch of books pelt me in the face. Natsuki tries to shield herself with her own arms as her face lands straight on my chest. Ugh. My right arm and my back seriously felt the impact. Ooh. Slowly, Natsuki comes to her senses. Ugh. She presses her arms straight into me and props herself up. Uh? Natsuki seems to realize that it's not the floor that's beneath her. Ooh. Gross! Gross! Gah! A fist pounds into my chest. Natsuki then hoists herself to her feet. What were you thinking? You sicko! Everything okay over there? I heard a loud noise. Monica suddenly peers in. Monica! See what happens when you put the manga on the top shelf? Are you trying to kill your club members or something? Jeez! Sorry, sorry. <laughs> oh, and one more thing. It seems like your most recent club member is a total pervert. I am not! I told him not to look up the skirt, but Anime J, he has a mind of his own. I tell you, he has a mind of his own. So I hope you're happy. I didn't! Somehow, it's impossible for me to explain this whole bizarre situation to Monica. I didn't do anything, I swear. I know, I know, don't worry. Monica says that quietly to me. Looks like I'm off the hook. Oh no! My? My? Huh? I look down. Natsuki is kneeling on the floor, holding one of the books that are scattered all over. There's a large diagonal crease along the page that she's desperately trying to smooth out. Ah, it must have landed on the page. Natsuki tries a bit more to fix the crease, but she can't get it out. Suddenly, she gives up and slams the book shut, then throws it to the floor. Instead of continuing to yell, she just lowers her head. <sighs> Natsuki, are you? No! Natsuki's voice squeaks. I see tears on her face. Ah. Uh, I'll help get the crease out, okay? It's partially my fault, so... Natsuki shakes her head, still looking down. No. I don't even care that much. I'm just... having a really bad day today. Natsuki sobs again. I didn't mean to take it out on you. I really didn't mean to. It's... It's fine. Is there anything you want to talk about? Natsuki shakes her head. Just... Every day... Is... So hard. I just want to... Come to the club and... Natsuki falls silent again. I can't press her. So I only do what I know how to do. Alright. Well, I'll help clean this up. And I'll move the rest of your manga for you. Ah. I pick up volume 2 of Parfait Girls. We'll set this one aside. This'll help cheer you up a bit, right? We can get started on it once I'm done here. Natsuki looks up with her glossy eyes. Aw, oh, Anime J is such a sweetheart. Her lip quivers. You're... You're really nice to me. Huh? That sounds really strange, coming from Natsuki. I didn't expect it at all. Well... I'm just treating you like a friend, you know? 
<laughs> Masuki lowers her head and stifles another sob. I'm not sure what happened to her today, but being nice is the least I can do. The next couple of minutes are silent between us as I begin gathering the scattered books. I make sure to slip them into the box in their correct order. After a little bit, Natsuki starts helping. It isn't long before we're done, and I hoist the box onto the shelf where Natsuki wanted to put it. Then, I get on the stool and quickly finish moving the rest of her books from the top shelf. Alright! That should do it. I hop off the stool. Natsuki averts her gaze. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it's nothing. Natsuki is holding the volume I set aside in her hands. Alright, I'm ready. Good! Even if you weren't, I'd make you anyway. You're taking responsibility for what you said. The thing about cheering me up. If you insist... We sit in the same spot as last time, and I open the second volume. Natsuki's mood quickly improves, laughing and pointing things out to me. She's surprisingly sharp, making note of a lot of subtle, repeated jokes and background elements. In the end, I'm pretty impressed by how everything ties together in this manga. I guess Natsuki has good taste after all. After some time, Monica gets our attention as usual, and it's time to share poems again. Guess I'll be holding on to this for now. Yep! Even you sound more enthusiastic this time! Well, I'm starting to get into it, you know? Hehehe! <laughs> Told you! Yeah, yeah. I return to my seat and slip the book into my bag. Alright, poem time. Who we going with first? You know what? Let's kind of go backwards. Let's go with Monica this time. And then we'll just work our way to the beginning. I think we chose Natsuki last time first. And then Sayori, then Yuri, then Monica. So we're just going to go reverse order. Hi again, Jay. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. I'll take that. As long as it's not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. Ahaha. <laughs> I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you wrote for today? Sure, here you go. I give my poem to Monica. All right. It's pretty good. You've been spending some time with Natsuki, haven't you? You must like her writing style. I sure do. Ah, uh, yeah. I think it's a neat way to tell a story. Hmm, I don't disagree. Natsuki's poems may be cute, but they're also meaningful. I can see why you'd be into the style. I guess that means you're not as much of a fan of Yuri's poems then? Uh, I wouldn't say that. I kind of like everyone's poems. That's true, but I'm sure you like some more than others, right? Like Yuri's use of complex words and symbolism. Or Sayuri's way of expressing happiness or sadness in a more direct way. You must have some kind of preference, don't you? Ah, not that it's a contest or anything. I was just curious, that's all. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. All right, let's take a look. Save me. The colors, they won't stop. Bright, beautiful colors. Flashing, expanding, piercing. Red, green, blue. An endless cacophony? I have never heard of that word in my life. Of meaningless noise. The noise, it won't stop. Violent, grating waveforms. Squeaking, screeching, piercing. Sine, cosine, tangent. Like playing a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a vinyl on a pizza crust. An endless poem of meaningless. Load me. All right. Great poem. Hmm. It's even more abstract than your last one, huh? <laughs> I guess it's just the way I write. I'm sorry if you don't like it. No, I never said that. I mean, it's not that I don't like it. I just don't understand what the fuck it was even saying. It's just the kind of thing I've never really seen before, I guess. I kind of like playing with my space on the paper. Choosing where and how to space your words can totally change the mood of the poem. The way I wrote the lines really short make it feel like they're trying to speak over the noise. I see. It's still hard for me to tell what it's about, though. <laughs> Sometimes asking what a poem is about isn't the right question. A poem can be as abstract as a physical expression of a feeling, or a conversation with a reader. So putting it that way, not every poem is about something. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You never know when you might change your mind, or when something unexpected may happen. 
Wait, is this tip even about writing? What am I even talking about? <laughs> That's my advice for today. Thanks for listening. What? That was weird. She was telling me to save the game. Okay, who should I show my poem to next? Actually, you know what? I'm gonna take her advice and I'm going to save the game. So I saved the game and now we are going to go with Yuri because we're going backwards. Um, are you still mad at me? Huh? For disrespecting Natsuki yesterday. Because reading this poem, now I know why you got mad at me. Because you, you prefer her writing over mine. That's not really true. Meaning when I disrespected her, I disrespected you too, didn't I? Oh no. Yuri, you might be reading into this a little too much. How could I be so stupid? I always let these things happen. Whenever I think before I speak, I just come off as awkward and unlikable. But if I speak without thinking, the things I want to keep inside come out and make people hate me. So, please don't force yourself to be around me. I know this is what Monica wants. But it's not fair to you when you could be enjoying your time with Natsuki and Sayori. Yuri! Please? It makes it easier for me if you don't express any concern. Besides, I have my books with me. That's all I need. Yuri smiles sadly and puts her head down on her desk. I'm frustrated. I don't hate her, but it's as if she's not capable of listening to me over her own thoughts. I sigh to myself. All I can do is accept that's how she is. If she wants to be left alone, then I have no choice but to abide that request. Oh, I'm not going to read her poem? Oh, that is fucked up. Okay, well, sorry, Yuri. Let's go with Sayuri. Jay? I really love your poems. I can't believe you've been hiding these from me. Uh, I'm not hiding anything. But your poems are so good. Yesterday's and this one too. You can't tell me you haven't done this before. I mean, you're really the only one who feels that way, so... Eh? No way! Not even Natsuki? Well, I guess Natsuki is the least likely to admit how much she likes something. But I don't think it's that. What do you mean? Well, I guess I'll be honest about it. It's a lot easier to write poems when I'm thinking about you. Eh? <laughs> Stop thinking weird things, idiot. I just mean that you're a really expressive person, I guess. How am I supposed to write poems about my own stupid life? But you somehow make everything in your life an adventure. Even the little things. Like cooking! Let's not talk about that. <laughs> so, yeah. I guess what I'm saying is that I feel more feelings through you than I feel through myself. That actually makes a lot of sense. We have that kind of weird connection. It's your fault for getting in my business all the time. Eh? I don't know if I understand. Ugh. You never understand when I try to explain things to you, do you, Siori? I pat Siori's head. <laughs> hey! I'm not a kid, you know. Are you sure about that? Mmm, maybe. Siori starts fiddling with her pencil between her hands. Hey, Jay? Will you give me your poem? I kind of want to keep it. Huh? Why? Because. Well, it's the first time you've written something for me. Aww. <laughs> Siori, you completely misunderstood. I didn't write this for you. <laughs> uh, are you even listening anymore? Well, whatever. I'll give it to you when we go home. Really? Snap. Ah! I broke my pencil. Siori hastily bends down to pick up the piece she dropped. But being inattentive of her surroundings, she bumps right into me. This is sorry. It's fine, it's fine. I'll get it for you. I bend down and pick up the broken pencil. Sayori clutches the desk behind her to support herself, knees shaking. I'm a little clumsy today. <laughs> Let's sit down, Sayori. Yeah! I grab Sayori's arm and help her sit at the desk. Anyway, I still haven't read your poem. Oh! Sorry, I forgot about that. But it's not as good as yours. Jeez, don't worry. I'm sure I'll like it. Bottles. 
I pop off my scalp like the lid of a cookie jar. It's the secret place where I keep all my dreams. Little balls of sunshine, all rubbing together like a bundle of kittens. I reach inside with my thumb and forefinger and pluck one out. It's warm and tingly, but there's no time to waste. I put it in a bottle to keep it safe. And I put the bottle on the shelf with all of the other bottles. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and bottle all in a row. My collection makes me lots of friends. Each bottle a starlight to make amends. Sometimes my friend feels a certain way. Down comes a bottle to save the day. Night after night, more dreams. Friend after friend, more bottles. Deeper and deeper my fingers go. Like exploring a dark cave, discovering the secrets hiding in the nooks and crannies. Digging and digging, scraping and scraping. I blow dust off my bottle caps. It doesn't feel like time elapsed. My empty shelf could use some more. My friends look through my locked front door. Finally all done, I open up and in come my friends. In they come in such a hurry. Do they want my bottles that much? I frantically pull them from the shelf, one after the other, holding them out to each and every friend, each and every bottle. But every time I let one go, it shatters against the tile between my feet. Happy thoughts, happy thoughts, happy thoughts and shards all over the floor. They were supposed to be for my friends, my friends who aren't smiling. They're all shouting, pleading, something, but all I hear is echo, 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 echo inside my head. Holy crap! Siori, did you really write this? Of course I did! Didn't I tell you yesterday I was gonna write the best poem ever? Yeah, but... I mean, I didn't expect something like this coming from you. Monica taught me a whole lot! And I've been really in touch with my feelings recently. I see that. It's almost kind of creepy. Creepy? Well, not exactly. Maybe because I'm so used to you being cheerful. Well, never mind. I'm thinking too hard about it. The point is, it came out good, so you should be proud of it. Aw, thanks. I feel like... I feel like I was meant to express myself this way. It even helps me understand my own feelings a little bit better. Writing is like magic. You've gotten pretty passionate about this, huh? I hope you keep it up. Yeah! Writing's the best! I'm gonna keep writing until I die! <laughs> Don't get ahead of yourself. Siari's always had a habit of getting obsessed with something before dropping it no more than a week later. I wonder if this is one of those times. But seeing the passion in her eyes makes it hard for me to be pessimistic. Alright, one more poem to go and it's Natsuki, so let's get it. Natsuki reads my poem. She keeps glancing at me, then back at the poem. By now, she must have read it more than once. Urgh. Is it that bad? No! No, it's not! It's good! It's really good, okay? There! I said it! Ugh! This wasn't supposed to happen at all! Why can't you just be bad at this? My poems are supposed to impress you, not the other way around. You're trying to impress me? Obviously! You think I'd let you enjoy Yuri's writing more than mine? Give me a break. Well, in that case, what's the problem with me trying to impress you? I'll tell you, you! Natsuki's face freezes, like she just realized something. E you You're trying to impress me? Natsuki vigorously scans her eyes over my poem one more time. Then... The poem slips out of her hands and flutters to the floor. I have to use the bathroom! Red-faced, Natsuki quickly walks out of the room. Hey, Jay? Did you do something to Natsuki? I just saw her rush out like that. You didn't do anything terrible, did you? No! I just told her that... My voice gets caught in my throat. There's no way I can tell Monica that I'm trying to impress Natsuki. Huh. Monica sees the poem lying on the floor and swiftly picks it up. She skims over it a second time, her smile not fading from her face. I see. At first I just thought you liked her writing style. But you wrote this for Natsuki, didn't you? I mean... Not really. In fact, didn't she like your poem a lot the other day too? I'm surprised you know her taste so well already. Are you sure you're not cheating, Jay? Cheating? What do you mean by that? Never mind, I'm just kidding. <laughs> I didn't understand Monica's joke at all. Anyway, how do you think Natsuki feels about you? 
Oh, you don't need to answer that. It was just something for you to think about. Hey! Natsuki comes up and snatches the poem out of Monica's hands. Neither of us had noticed her re-enter the classroom. Did you read this, Monica? Of course, I liked it. Ugh! You should really stop reading things that aren't for you, you know. You have a bad habit of doing that. Huh? But Jay wrote this poem. And we're supposed to share it with everyone, right? Ugh! Natsuki freezes. She apparently forgot that my poem is technically for everyone to read. Okay, well, I think Jay is done sharing this poem with everyone. It's not like anyone would want to read this anyway. In fact, I'm just gonna hold on to this. If you insist. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Like what? Ugh. Never mind. Well, I guess Natsuki has my poem now. Not that I really planned on keeping it. Anyway, read my poem now. And no, I won't let you keep it. This is my only copy. Amy likes spiders. Who the fuck is Amy? You know what I heard about Amy? Amy likes spiders. Icky, wriggly, hairy, ugly spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a cute singing voice. I heard her singing my favorite love song. Every time she sang the chorus, my heart would pound to the rhythm of the words. But she likes spiders. That's why I'm not friends with her. One time, I hurt my leg really bad. Amy helped me up and took me to the nurse. I tried to let her touch me. She likes spiders, so her hands are probably gross. That's why I'm not friends with her. Amy has a lot of friends. I always see her talking to people. She probably talks about spiders. What if her friends start to like spiders too? That's why I'm not friends with her. It doesn't matter if she has other hobbies. It doesn't matter if she keeps it private. It doesn't matter if it doesn't hurt anyone. It's gross. She's gross. The world is better off without spider lovers. And I'm gonna tell everyone. Not bad, right? It's quite a bit longer than yesterday's. Yesterday's was way too short. I was just warming up. I hope you didn't think that was the best I could do. No, of course not. Anyway, the message is pretty straightforward in this poem. I doubt I have to explain it. Sometimes you can explain complicated issues with much simpler analogies. And it helps people realize how stupid they're being. Like anyone would agree that the subject of this poem is an ignorant jerk. Do you know people like that? Of course. It's about how everyone thinks my... That doesn't matter. It can be about anything. I wrote it to be easy to relate to. Everyone has some kind of weird hobby or a guilty pleasure. Something that you're afraid if people find out, they'd make fun of you or think less of you. But that just makes people stupid. Who cares what someone likes? As long as they're not hurting anyone and it makes them happy. I think people really need to learn to respect others for liking weird things. Well, you're definitely right. At least, I can relate to that. And I'm sure a lot of other people can too. You know, I'm glad that you can appreciate this kind of writing. I mean, I know I was talking about that yesterday, but I've been, well, I've been enjoying sharing my writing with you, so... So consider yourself lucky, okay? <laughs> well, thanks for being honest. What's that supposed to mean? I'm always honest! Jeez! Just look forward to tomorrow too, okay? Alright, I will. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? I have something extra planned today, so if everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh, do we really have to do something for the festival? It's not like we can put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're going to keep it simple, okay? We won't need much more than a few decorations. Siori has been working on some posters, and I've designed some pamphlets we can give out during the event. Okay, that's great and all, but that doesn't tell us what we're actually going to be doing for the event. Ah, uh, sorry. I thought you heard about it already. We're going to be performing. Performing? <sighs> um, Monica? Yeah, we're going to be having a poetry performance. Each of us are going to choose a poem to recite during the event. But the cool part is, we're also going to let everyone else come up and recite poems too. Siori's putting it all on the posters in case anyone wants to prepare ahead of time. <laughs> Siori, who's been coloring a poster, 
holds it up for us to see. Are you kidding me, Monica? You didn't... You didn't already start putting those posters up, did you? Eh, uh, well, I did. Did you really think it's that bad of an idea? Well, no. It's not a bad idea. But I didn't sign up for this, you know. There is no way I'm going to be performing in front of a group of people like that. I... I agree with Natsuki. I could never, in my life, do something like that. Imagining it, Yuri shakes her head in fear. Guys! No, Sayori. I understand where they're coming from. Remember that Natsuki and Yuri have never shared their poems with anyone until just a couple days ago. It's a lot to ask for them to recite their poems out loud to a whole room full of people. I guess I kind of overlooked that. So, I'm sorry. But, I still think we should give it our best. We're the only ones responsible for the fate of this club. If we start the event and each put on a good performance, then it will inspire others to do the same. And the more people who perform, the better we'll be able to show everyone what literature is all about. Yeah! It's about expressing your feelings, being intimate with yourself, finding new horizons, and having fun. That's right. And it's those reasons that we're all in this club today. Don't you want to share that with others? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? I know you do. I know we all do. And if all it takes is standing in front of the room for two minutes and reciting a poem, then I know you can do it. Natsuki and Yuri remain silent. Siyori looks worried. I guess that leaves me no choice. I agree. I don't think it's too much to ask. I think that Sayori and Monica have been trying really hard to get new members. The least we could do is help them out a little bit. Well, maybe, but... It looks like Natsuki doesn't have any arguments left. Ugh. Okay, fine. I guess I'll just have to get it over with. All right. Phew. Thanks, Natsuki. What about you, Yuri? Yuri dejectedly glances around at everyone else's expectant faces. <sighs> I guess I don't really have a choice. <laughs> That's everyone. You're the best, Yuri. This club is seriously going to be the death of me. Oh, gosh. You'll be fine, Yuri. But anyway, let's move on to the main event. I want each of you to choose a poem of yours. We're going to practice reciting them in front of each other. No way! Monica! This is too sudden. Well, if you can't recite your poem in front of the club, how do you expect to do it in front of strangers? Oh no. Don't worry. I'll start off to help everyone feel a little more comfortable. Can I go next? <laughs> of course. Now, let's see. Monica flips through her notebook to the specific poem she has in mind for herself. She then stands behind the podium. The title of this poem is The Way They Fly. Ahem! Monica begins reciting her poem. Her clear, confident voice fills the room. More than that, her inflection is pristine. She knows exactly how to apply emotion behind each line she recites, bringing the words to life. Is this something she's done before, or is she simply a natural? I glance around me. Everyone has their eyes on Monica. Siori looks amazed. Yuri has an intense expression on her face that I don't understand. The four of us applaud. Monica takes a breath and smiles. That... that was so good, Monica! Ahaha, <laughs> thank you very much. I was just hoping to set a good example. Are you ready to go next, Yuri? Uh, I'll go next. Ooh, Yuri's fired up all of a sudden. Yuri clutches the sheet of paper between her hands and stands up. Keeping her head down, she walks quickly over to the podium. This poem is called... Yuri anxiously glances at each of us. You can do it, Yuri. It's... it's called... After Image of a Crimson Eye. Yuri's voice shakes as she starts reading the poem. Just a moment ago, she practically refused to do this. Why is she suddenly putting in so much effort? As Yuri gets past the first couple of lines, her voice changes. It's almost like what happens when Yuri gets absorbed into her books. Her quivering words transform into the sharp syllables of a fierce and confident woman. The poem is full of twists and turns in its structure that she enunciates with perfect timing. This must be a rare glimpse into the whirling fire Yuri keeps concealed inside her head. 
Suddenly, she's finished. Everyone is stunned. Yuri snaps back into reality and glances around her, as if she's bewildered even herself. I... It's up to me to save the situation. I'm the first to start applauding. Everyone joins me afterward, and we give Yuri the recognition she deserves. It's not that we didn't want to applaud for her, but we were caught so off guard that we must have forgotten. As we applaud, Yuri holds the poem to her chest and rushes back into her seat. Yuri, that was really good. Thank you for sharing. Looks like Yuri is down for the count. Okay! I guess I'm next then. Sayori hops out of the chair and cheerfully walks to the podium. This one's called My Meadow. Ah. Ahaha! Sorry, I giggled. Eehehe! Sayori. It's a lot harder than I thought. How did you guys do it so easily? Ah. Try not to think of it like you're reciting to other people. Imagine you're reciting it to yourself, like in front of a mirror or in your own head. It's your poem, so it'll come out the best that way. I see, I see. Okay then, Siori begins her poem. Somehow, it feels like her soft voice was made as a perfect match. The poem isn't aimlessly cheery like Siori is. It's serene and bittersweet. If I were to read this on paper, I probably wouldn't think much of it. But hearing it come from Sayori's voice almost gives it a whole new meaning. Maybe this is what Sayori meant when she said she likes my poems. It's like I get to reach more deeply into someone I thought I knew through and through. Sayori finishes, and we applaud. I did it! Good job, Sayori. <laughs> even Jay liked it. I guess that's a good sign. What does that even mean? It came out nicely, Sayori. The atmosphere of the poem fits you really nicely. But it might be that the other poems wouldn't work quite as well with that kind of delivery. Eh? I don't really understand. In other words, I've seen poems of yours where that sort of gentle delivery wouldn't work as well. They might need a little more force behind them, depending on what you're reading. Oh, I know what you mean. That's, well, I've been practicing that kind of thing. It's just embarrassing to do it in front of everyone. Hee hee hee. The next time, I'm going to make you pick a poem that challenges you a little more. We don't have much time before the festival, you know. Okay! Now, who's next? Natsuki? Huh! Don't make me go before Jay. It's not like I can compare to you guys anyway. Might as well let Jay lower everyone's standards a little before I have to do it. Natsuki? It's fine, it's fine. I might as well get it over with. But it's not like I have much of a selection of what to read. I'll just have to go with the one I wrote for today. I stand up and step in front of the podium. Everyone has their eyes on me, making me feel terribly awkward. I recite my poem. Since I'm not exactly confident in my own writing, it's hard to put energy into it. Despite that, once I finish, I receive applause anyway. Sorry, I'm not really as good as everyone else. Don't worry about it so much. I think it's less about your abilities and more about your lack of confidence in your writing. That's something that'll improve over time, though. Yeah, maybe. All right, then. That just leaves you, Natsuki. Yeah, yeah. I'm going. Natsuki begrudgingly gets out of her seat and makes her way to the podium. The poem is called... It's called... Why are you all looking at me? Because you're presenting. Huh? Anyway, the poem is called Jump. Natsuki takes a breath. Once she starts reciting the poem, her sour attitude disappears a little. While she's still a little unenthused, her poem has a rhythm and rhyme to it. It's Natsuki's trademark style, and it works surprisingly well when spoken aloud. The words feel like they bounce up and down, as if giving life to the poem. Natsuki finishes, and everyone applauds. She huffs back to her seat. That wasn't so bad, was it? Easy for you to say. You'd better not make me do that again. Ah, uh, well, do you at least feel prepared enough to recite a poem in front of other people? I mean, doing it in front of other people will be way easier. I can put on whatever face I want for other people. But when it's just my friends, it's just embarrassing. That's a surprise, Natsuki. I think it would be the other way around for me. Well, that's just how it is, so... Well, I guess in that case... You won't have much to worry about for the festival. That said, I want to thank everyone for coming through. It might be hard, but I hope that you all have an idea of what it's like now. 
Make sure you pick a poem and get enough practice before the festival, okay? I'll be making pamphlets, so let me know ahead of time what you'll be reciting. Jeez. I should probably find some other poem to recite instead. That's fine too. It doesn't have to be your own. I'm already pleasantly surprised that you're putting in all this effort for the club. It makes me really happy. Uh, yeah, no problem. Okay, everyone. I think that's about it for today. I know the festival is coming up, but let's try to write poems for tomorrow as well. It's been working out really nicely so far, so I'd like to continue that. As for the festival, we'll finish planning tomorrow, and then we'll have the weekend to prepare. Monday's the big day. I can't wait! I can do this. I can do this. All right. I stand up. There's no way I'll be able to find the same enthusiasm as Sayori and Monica, but I'll do my best to get through it. If it's for the sake of the club. And impressing Monica. Then I'll have to do my best. Ready to go, Sayori? Yup! Look at you two, always going home together like that. It's kind of adorable, isn't it? <laughs> Jeez, guys. Don't make such a big deal out of it. It must be a little nice, though. Well... Uh, how am I supposed to respond to that? It's okay, Jay. You don't have to say it. Whatever. Let's go already. I walk home with Siori once more. Even though it's only been a few days, a lot of things have already changed. But today, Siori is being a little quieter than usual on the way home. Hey, Siori. Sorry, I was spacing out. Uh, no wonder. Um... I was thinking about something from earlier. I like how we get to... I mean... Siori fumbles with her words. So, let's just say that one day, Natsuki asked to walk home with you. Huh? What would you do? What kind of question is that? You're kind of putting me on the spot here. <laughs> I would walk home with Natsuki. I would still walk home with Siori. Aw, oh, come on. That's a loaded question right there. I mean... I don't mind Sayori. She's a pretty cool character. I mean, I'm not like 100% going with Natsuki. I like all the girls in this game. They're all cool. I don't want to make her feel bad. And Sayori's a pretty cool girl anyway. So I'm going to choose. I would still walk home with Sayori. Sayori. You really think I would ditch you for Natsuki? Huh? But. She's so cute and fun to be around. Jeez. I already see her in the club every day. Besides. You always seem to really like going home together. I wouldn't just ruin that for you. You're so silly, Jay. You think about me too much sometimes. Matsuki would deserve it if she wanted it, so... Siori, I've already made up my mind. I really can't figure you out sometimes. Sorry. Besides, what's the point in speculating something that's never gonna happen? Hmm. The conversation trails off. It's kind of a weird thing for Siori to care so much about. But I want to respect her and keep her happy, too. Then again, the festival is only a few days away. Who knows what will happen in that time? Oh, here we go. Poem time again. Okay. Let's try to make this one about Sayori. So let's go with special. And then we'll go with childhood because we're childhood friends. Friends. Okay, I'm choosing ones that are good with Sayori. Silly. That's Sayori again. Love. Sayori. Kawaii. That's Natsuki. Sunset. Awesome. That's Sayori. I got a couple more to go. Valentine. Unstable. Sticky. Daydream. Daydream. Smile. Promise. Landscape. Incapable. Ambient. Bunny. Giggle. Giggle. What? Heartbeat. Vivid. Variance. Inferno. Anxiety. Jump. Email. Strawberry. Sensation. Lipstick. I think heartbeat. Ah, oh, Natsuki. Okay, I think Sayori jumped the most out of all the choices that I made. Let's see how we did. Aw, oh, man. I'm the last one here again. Don't worry. I just walked in too. Were you practicing piano again? Yeah. <laughs> you must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and now picking up piano. Well, maybe not determination, but I guess passion. Remember that the club wouldn't be here if it wasn't for all of you. And I'm super happy that you're all willing to help out for the festival too. Ah, I can't wait for the festival. It's gonna be great. Eh? Huh? Weren't you complaining about it just yesterday, Natsuki? Well, yeah. I'm not talking about our part of the festival. 
but it's a whole day of school where we get to play and eat all kinds of delicious food. You sound a bit like Sayori all of a sudden. Monica, do they usually have fried squid? Squid? That's a pretty specific thing to look forward to. Hey, squid is pretty dope, especially fried squid. Mmm. Oh, come on. Are you saying you don't like squid? You of all people? Huh? I didn't say I don't like it. Besides, what do you mean by you of all people? Because it's right in your name. Monica. Eh? That's not how you say my name at all. Also, that joke makes no sense in translation. Ah, uh, never mind. Let's just focus on our own event for now, okay? Hehehe. <laughs> fine, fine. Your reactions aren't as fun as Yuri's or Sayori's anyway. Excuse me? Where is Sayori anyway? Oh, there you are. Sayori is sitting at a desk in the corner of the room, looking down at nothing. I walk over to her. Hey, Sayori. I wave my hand in front of her face. Eh? Huh? You're spacing out again. Ah. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Don't mind me. You can go talk to everyone else. Huh? Is everything alright? Uh, of course. Why wouldn't it be? It just feels like you're a little off. Sorry for assuming things. Jeez, you worry too much about me. I'm fine, see? Sierra shows me a big smile. Don't let me distract you from having fun with everyone. Well, alright. If you say so. I worriedly glance at Sayori before turning back toward everyone else. But the conversation has already dispersed, with everyone back at their usual activities. Maybe I should ask Monica if she's noticed anything about Sayori recently. Since they've been preparing for the festival, they must be spending a lot of time together. I timidly approach Monica, who is shuffling through some papers at her desk. Jay, what's up? Hey, this might sound a little strange, but... Have you noticed anything up with Sayori recently? Anything up with her? In what way do you mean? Maybe I'm reading into it a little too much, but she seems a bit downcast today. Oh, you think so? I can't say I've noticed anything about her. Monica peers across the room at Sayori, who is idly dragging a rubber eraser up and down her desk. Maybe there is something on her mind, but I'm surprised I'm not the one asking you, Jay. You certainly know her a lot better than I do. Yeah, but she's never really like this. She's always talked to me about things that bothered her. But this time, when I asked her, she was really dismissive. Sorry, I know it's not your problem. I just want to ask if you knew anything, so I'll drop it now. No, no. It's important to me too. I mean, I'm also friends with her. And I also care about the well-being of my club members, you know. Maybe I'll try talking to her myself. Huh? Are you sure about that? She seems like she wanted to be left alone. Are you sure? Maybe she just has a hard time bringing it up with a person of interest. Person of interest? What do you mean by that? I'm saying that maybe the thing on her mind is you, Jay. Me? How on earth would you come to that conclusion? Well, I probably shouldn't say too much, but... Sierra talks about you more than anything else you know. Eh? Huh? She's been so much happier ever since you joined the club. It's like a little extra light was turned on inside of her. What? No way. Sayori is always like that. She's always been full of sunshine. It's not any different now than it always has been. Hehehe. <laughs> You're so funny, Jay. Have you thought that maybe you've always seen her as so cheerful? Because that's just how she is when she's around you? Ah, I said too much. I'm sorry, what do I know anyway? I didn't mean to jump to conclusions, so you should just forget about what I said. I'll try to talk to her, so try not to think about it for now. Alright. Monica smiles meaningfully. I know she said to forget about it, but I already know that I won't be able to get her words out of my head. Monica stands up from her desk and walks across the room to where Sayori is sitting. I watch her kneel down next to Sayori and gently talk to her, but she's keeping her voice so quiet that I can't hear her from here. I sigh and sit myself down. I know Sayori told me not to worry about her and to have fun with everyone else. But that's impossible to do when she's behaving like this. Exactly how much do I care about her that I'm letting this weigh me down so much? Now it feels like I'm the one behaving out of the ordinary. 
But there's nothing I can do besides wait for Monica. Hey, you. Huh? I look up to see Natsuki next to me. Are you just gonna sit there and keep staring at nothing? There isn't that much time, so... Uh, sorry. I didn't mean to make you worry or anything. It's not like I'm worried. I was just... Natsuki glances down at her side. She's holding a volume of manga in her hand. That's right. Something just came up for a minute, but we can get started now. I won't make you wait any longer. Jeez. Now you're making me feel like a jerk. If something's bothering you, then you can just tell me to leave you alone and I will. I mean... Assuming you didn't feel like talking about it or anything. She practically mumbles the last part. Nah, I'm probably making it seem like a bigger deal than it is. I've just been thinking about Sayori, that's all. Sayori? Thinking about her? Yeah, she seems pretty down today. But she didn't want to admit it to me. So I can't help but wonder if something happened to her. Oh. Natsuki exhales. Well, first of all, you should really work on your phrasing. But anyway, you're her best friend, right? Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Then in that case, I think you should trust her a little more. If she needed you, then you would be the first person she would go to, right? Well, I guess that's true. I mean, some people just have those days. You can't always avoid it. If anything, she probably doesn't want you to worry about her because it's not important. Yeah, that's kind of what she said to me. Maybe it's not right for me to go against her wishes. Exactly! If she needs you to worry about her, then it'll be a lot more obvious. Yeah, I should have thought of it that way from the start. Natsuki fiddles with her book she's holding in her hands. She... She really means a lot to you, doesn't she? Ah, don't get the wrong idea or anything. We've just been friends for a long time. It's normal to be worried about your friends. I mean, you were worried about me, so... I was not! Jeez, if you're fine... Then let's hurry and get started already. Yeah, yeah. Alright guys, I think I'm going to end this episode here. Mostly because I'm starting to lose my voice because I've been reading for about an hour and 30 minutes. I can see that Anime J is starting to have some girl problems because Siori likes him and Natsuki likes him. And I don't know if Yuri or Monica like Anime J too. But we're going to handle all that stuff in the next episode. So if you want to see me play another episode of Doki Doki Literature Club, make sure you give this video one big fat like. And tell a friend today that Jay from the Cub Scouts is dead too! <laughs>